friends from wherever you're watching from today. Today we're going to be delving into the book of Haggai. Turn to the person next to you and say, hey guy, how are you going? Yes, we're looking at Haggai. If you went there on the weekend, the story of Haggai, two chapters, is a great little story which takes place just after the Babylonian exile where the people come out and the context is that the people jump straight in, obey God, start rebuilding the temple that was destroyed, the temple that was the basis and the meeting place of their worship. So they start rebuilding that thing, but then opposition comes along, difficulty comes along, pressure comes along, and they give up on what God had called them to do, which meant they also were giving up on their worship. And so Haggai steps into the space that this there'd been a lapse, a stagnation, going through the motions for nearly 20 years, and Haggai steps in and he critiques them uh, about this and, and that they were giving God their leftovers. And in, in verse 4 it says, Hey, here you guys are. You're, why are you living in these luxurious houses while God's temple lays in ruin? And he criticizes them and he says, What's going on? And it's almost like, you know, in my house, um, dinner time gets really messy. We, we eat together around our kitchen bench. And our kids are terrible, you know, food's going everywhere. They'll eat half the stuff on their plate, half is on the floor. But what we do after dinner, we've got two Labradors, uh, beautiful Labradors. They come in and what, what their dinner is essentially is coming in, cleaning up all the leftovers on the floor. And, uh, and so they get all the leftovers. Haggai's essentially saying this. He's saying, what you're giving to God in worship and obedience is like what my dogs were getting for dinner. You're, giving, you're sorting out yourself first and giving God the leftovers. And so he's talking to them about their misplaced priorities. And man, isn't this a challenge for us today? Is to, and how much do we need a, is it worthwhile evaluating out the priorities in our life? And how we are investing our, our time, our talents and our treasure and whether how we're doing that actually matches up with the priorities that we want to see in God. Are they eternal priorities? Are they good priorities? Or, or have, have some things crept in that's, that's actually been going against um, loving God and living in his kingdom? An important conversation. We, we just had Aria. So we had a new family, had a, a, a newborn at home. And I remember Tanya basically pulling me up on, on this. And I was... I was tired and I was, I was doing ministry, I was doing church stuff, but I was also working at school. And I was just, basically, I was bringing a whole lot of work home, and, and which meant even though I was in the home, I, was, I wasn't really present. And she called me out on it and she said, Sam, you're home, but yeah, why are you working all the time? It, it's like, you don't have time for me, you don't have time for the kids, you don't have time to do all these other things. And what it showed me is that something had happened in my priorities that I'd let these things creep in and become more important than spending time with my wife and my family. And then it's not that we're bad people when we do this. It just means that we need to reevaluate these things all the time and make room for God in our life and make sure the things that we care about the most, actually we're making time for and rightly prioritizing them in your life. So what are your priorities? Are you making time for God? The Bible says, seek first the kingdom, his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you. And we know that there are things, you know, do not, the Bible talks about in Matthew 6, do not store up for yourself things that will um, perish or fade or where moth and rust destroy, but treasure up for yourself treasure in heaven. Are you doing that in your life? Are you prioritizing those good things? You know, for me, it's so important to, when I have times of solitude, when I go for walks or exercise, go for runs, or have time driving, having time out of the busy schedule, that often in these times where I have a chance to pray, spend time, quiet time with God, is that I can actually test my motives, evaluate my priorities, and actually allow God to shape my loves and, and sort some of those things out in my life. And when I'm not having that, I find that's where those things creep in. So my next question is, are you making time, where are you making time for God in your life? Where are you making time to pray and self-reflect? Let the Bible wash over you. Have solitude, thinking time, and have time to evaluate what 
Um, is there anything in my, my heart that's grabbing hold, that's taking up more space than it should? And being able to repent of those things. I love that, you know, in all these things, we see that Jesus is the perfect example where the Bible says that he regularly retreated to the quiet places. And that even in his busy ministry schedule with all the pressures that came upon Jesus, all the needs that came, he still made sure he had that time early in the morning where he was having uninterrupted time with God. I, I see that as a time that was crucial for him to stay connected to his purpose and his mission and in right relationship with God. And it's like that recentering all the time upon those things. And we need that on a daily basis. How are you going with that? Are you spending that time with God? That's the story of Haggai. I trust that there's going to be some great discussion that comes out of that in your life group. Why don't we pray together um, before we get stuck into that? Lord, we thank you for the message of Haggai. We thank you that you speak to us through all parts of Scripture. And Lord, as, it, as we in, engage with this message and as we move into discussion, Lord, help us to evaluate our priorities and that we too may be people who seek first your kingdom, your righteousness, and we trust that all these things, that you'll help make the parts fit. And that as we make time for you, you will realign us um, to where we need to go in our life. Bless this time together in fellowship and community. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Amen.